hear me. Uh, th I want to thank the organizers. Oh, actually, Ali. Are the other organizers here? Then let me only thank Ali. Uh, and, I, and I want to thank you for showing up on this slow, lazy, hot Monday afternoon. Uh, yeah, so I changed my title because uh, half an hour is too short to prove anything, but I can give you an example. So the goal is just to give you an example, and maybe I'll explain why it's new. But when I explain when it, why is it new, okay, that's right. So I'm, I want to explain why it's new, but the danger is uh, once I explain it, you'll think it's not new, but because it's not, but it still is. Okay. No, it's it's true. It's true. Okay. Uh, so. Why? Okay, uh, let me talk about old examples, but first, uh, here's the setting. Uh, three manifold to a three manifold, partially hyperbolic, diffeo, and uh, maybe I'll just give a quick definition. So there's a F invariant splitting. Oh, I'll give half of a definition that everybody gives. Uh, there's three invariant sub bundles, and then uh, in, in my setting, everything's nice. This is all the estimates are nice. This is uniformly contracting, this is uniformly expanding, and the center is uniformly in the middle. It's all the nicest uh, definition possible. Okay, so I now have to tell you what the old examples are. So here's the old examples. And by old, I mean one year old. Okay, perfect. So what are the old examples? Uh, well, uh, one is uh, just an Ossoff. on the three torus. So you have uh, one expanding eigenvalue, one contracting one, and the third one is in the middle. And any Anasov example on T3 is partially hyperbolic. Any Anasov like that. OK, uh, then what's the second old example? It's uh, you take an Anosov on T2, and then you uh, multiply it by the identity, and this is on T2 times S1. So you have uh, Anosov everywhere, and then it's, it's just sheets of Anosov. So that, that's, that's example two, very old. And then what's uh, and then you take time one maps of Anosov flows. So there are Anosov flows which uh, look like this, except EC is just a flow direction, so nothing is happening. And you can just look at the time one or time two, time two pi map doesn't ma matter, and you'll get an example. So you have these three classes of examples. And I guess maybe I should write down this matrix here, because it wouldn't be a nice talk if I didn't write this matrix down. So let me write the matrix down again. OK, so now it probably might be a nice talk. OK, okay so uh, there are these three examples. And there was this classification. You want to classify all types of examples. And the, the classification was these three are the only type of examples. So uh, for dynamically coherent, so I should write that down. So I don't, I don't think this has been defined, and maybe I should uh, define it. What is dynamically coherent for my? It's uh, EC is integrable, but then you get all the other bundles are integrable also. And let me not say all, because some of them are impossible. So EC. Okay, so if you assume this, uh, then there is some classification that says uh, these are the only three types of examples, and it's up to these are the only examples up to uh, something called leaf conjugacy. 
Okay, so what is leaf conjugacy? So I have to tell you what leaf conjugacy is. Okay, so I have to draw this. I have a manifold and a map F. Sorry. I'm too strong for this chalk. And, yeah. and I have another map G. Uh, what is the leaf conjugacy as a map H? And then now this is not, uh, I have to draw H. Uh, let me draw H in a way. Like, let me draw this. So this map looks like this. So the, it's not, the diagram does not commute. And hopefully I drew it in a way to show you it commutes up to a straight line. So what does this mean? This means if I first do F and then I do H, and then there's another way to do it. I can first do H and then do G. These two guys are in the same center leaf. So the diagram doesn't commute. You might be off, but you're off by on the same center leaf. The center is one dimensional in this case. So it says, uh, you know, these are the only examples. And these are very simple examples. I should say simple, we have no idea what this is. This is like a black box, but that's still, we can assume if this is simple, then they're all simple examples. OK, so the object of this talk is uh, there, there's some other examples. And that's what I'll talk about. So there are some other examples. Uh, but before I talk about building the other examples, I have to go to older examples. So these were old examples, and now older examples. Okay. So what are the even older examples? So 1976, Franks and Robinson gave an example of uh, quasi Anasov, which I probably won't define. on T3 connects some T3. So what's quasi Anasov? It's, uh, maybe I'll define it quickly. I won't write it down. It's a uh, vector in the tangent bundle is either expanding in forward time or backward time. And uh, they do some surgery, and they build this example. Then 1979 is Frank's Williams. Example of a non transitive Anasov flow. Okay. I will talk about that example in detail, but I will not do uh, the other one because they're the same. Okay. Because same type of construction, uh, two steps, do surgery, that's the easy step, and the second step is to check that you've done the surgery and then things still work. Check if it is still an Ossoff or partially hyperbolic, or whatever. So this is the hard part. The easy part is to take something and glue something else. OK. Yeah. OK, so let's see. Am I running? No, I'm fine on time. So the hard part is not that hard, because right around the 1970s, I don't know. I'm not a good historian. Um, it was uh, Mania's thesis. He was just graduating. So that, that was very useful. And then uh, you could just plug in Mania's thesis and uh, check that their examples were actual real examples. So let me talk about Mania's thesis. And now it's probably old. Everybody knows uh, how to do this. OK. So if uh, psi t 
is an Anasa flow. And you have to check two things. Psi t has a chain recurrence set, the on the chain recurrence set. And you, what do you have to check? You have to check that the stable, center stable of an orbit trans, is transverse to center unstable of an orbit. Gamma is, gamma is an orbit. So you have to check transversality, and you have to check that they're the same dimension. And three, center stable has constant dimension. So this was a black box, and I'll go through this construction, and I'll probably just say by Manier's theorem, uh, everything is okay. And these guys have to be transverse because the bundles are transverse. Okay, so now let me start uh, talking about the example. And now you can, uh, you can interrupt me. I don't know how complicated things will get, but. So now this, this is the best part of the talk for me because I'm gonna stop writing because uh, I cannot write and I don't think in words, but I'll draw a lot of pictures. So this is the best part of the talk for me. I probably wanna stop writing any words down. Let's see if I can pull that off. Maybe I still have to write some words down. Okay, so this is what you do. And this is the same thing for the quasi anosov map. What you do is you, uh, this is all T2, it's gonna be T2. And then you flow up, this is a, I'm gonna first construct a map on T2 cross an interval. So this is unit speed flow. I'm going to flow until I reach the top, and then I'm going to glue by a map. And the map I'm going to glue by is the DA map. And then I'm, I'm going to build like a flow on that object. Now this is a closed three manifold. And what is it going to look like? Okay, so if you don't know anything about the DA, it's to derive from an OSA map. And the choice here is going to be, there's going to, you're going to blow up, you're going to take an OSA 211, and you're going to blow up a sink, and uh, you're going to make a point of source, sorry. So you're going to make a point of source, so you'll get this kind of, uh, you'll get a standard foliation, but then you'll open it up. Oh, unzipping, it's called unzipping some sometimes. So this is a source. So you'll just blow it up. But the way you can do this, is uh, you can keep uh, one foliation unchanged. So I think I'll use red to draw stable. So this is a stable foliation. So the red is stable and the white is unstable. So this is the first talk with color chalk. That's good, aren't you glad you stayed around? Okay, and then Okay, and then, uh, so the, uh, this is step one. Now this looks horrible. This is not even close to being an ISO flow, but you're not done yet. And uh, what happens here is uh, this guy's an attractor. So this is a source. This white stuff is an attractor. And the white is crossed like an interval here, which I don't know how many pictures to draw. So maybe I'll draw these pictures. The stables are vertical. I'll draw a few of them. The stables are vertical, and that's going to be important. Okay, so now this looks uh, horrible. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to drill out a torus in the middle. So let me tell you how, what the torus looks like. Okay, so if I'm going to glue from here to here, this guy's a source, so it's going to expand a piece over here. 
Now let's see, where am I going to draw that piece? Right here, probably. So I don't want to crowd a picture, but there'll be a torus here, which I'll draw right here. The torus looks like this. And it's, and it's important it's got that shape. OK. So uh, uh, that's a torus, because this piece is identified with the one on the bottom. And it gets bigger, because it's source. So you can draw a transverse torus that way. And I said transverse. What is it transverse to? Well, these straight guys is transverse to. So there are these straight guys here. They all hit it transversely. And the transverse curves look like this. And I'll draw a more detailed picture of that. And why am I doing this? Because I hope I didn't erase this. You have to check some transversality. You have to apply money at some point, or you don't have an answer flow. OK, 15 minutes left. Perfect timing. I think I'm halfway done here. OK. And I'll also draw what the foliation looks like on this torus. So because you probably have seen this foliation before. So what does the foliation look like here? Let me try to draw it. So this is the unrolled torus. And what does this foliation look like? It looks like uh, these rib components, as you can see. Did I draw this correctly? OK. I want to make sure it's. Uh, I'll draw it this way. And this matches, I've drawn a few pieces here. And there's one which is completely transverse with corresponds to this. And in fact, there's two. There's one in the back. So this is the other one. OK, so step one. Now, this looks horrible. You've built out a torus. You have uh, something messed up going on. How do you solve this problem? Well. You might as well double down. If you're losing, you might as well double down. And that's what happens. You look at its evil twin here. OK. What's his evil twin is you do, oh, you look at the mirror image. So why is it evil? Because it's a mirror image. All mirror images are evil. OK. So what does that mean? So. I look at the inverse of this map, and I do the inverse of this construction. So maybe I should draw some pictures here. Uh, let's see. Let's start this way. And what's this going to look like? So now I have pictures like that. And this is a sink, instead of being a source. And it's along the stable. Wait, I should, yeah, that was the wrong color, right? That was the wrong color. That's bad. That's red. And the white is straight here now. Is that right? No, that's wrong. I should draw some straight pieces. And then you have a corresponding torus here, which looks like this now. Uh, it looks fatter that way. I know that way. Right? And then uh, you have these pieces, and you get another rape foliation, which is now drawn in white. But if this was. Uh, if the, here, this is center stable. This was center stable. Uh, this guy is center unstable, I think. OK. And now, how do you check Monier's? You've drilled out a torus in the middle here, drilled out a torus in the middle here, and you're going to glue them. And if everything is transverse, by Monier, you're done. That's all you have to check is transversality. And you have an Anasov flow. And why is it non-transitive? Because you have an attractor and a repeller right here. OK, so how do you glue this piece to that piece? 
here's another picture. This is a talk full of pictures. How do you glue that? Okay, so I will not change the white because I have it here. Now let me draw the red right over it, hoping everything is transverse. And I will not crowd the picture here. But you can see everything, you can make a transverse. That's it. So you just had to glue things. So what did you do? You started with uh, DA suspension. You took out a torus, made sure some foliation was transverse to the torus, did the, the opposite, the mirror image, and you glued them together. And one was standard stable, one was standard unstable. And because you can glue them transversely, you have an example. OK, so old example of an anasa flow non-transitive because you have an attractor and a repeller. OK, so what do we do now? So this is why this example is maybe not new. What's the new example? OK, so there's a transition in the middle going from good to bad, or good to evil, and actually going from evil to good. So I drew the picture correctly. Usually, I just the evil one is the one you draw second on the right-hand side. That's, that's the definition. I'm not making this up. I'm following the definition. OK. So what is, uh, what is happening here now in the middle? In the middle, you have a passage. So this one's the attractor. You have a passage from, so there's a torus here, which I'll draw this way. And you can imagine this foliation on it, this foliation. And there's a torus right here. And you have this foliation on it. OK? And then the flow of the thing I'm, way I'm drawing it is flowing this way. It's flowing this way. And of course, this is T2 times an interval here, an interval here. So there's a piece. And the uh, foliations are very nice here. That means, and let me tell you how nice they are. If I translate up like this, I still maintain the same foliation. Or I translate down. And if I move up and down here, I get the same foliation. And in the middle, I have horizontal lines moving from evil to good. That's good. So what do I do here? I, I look at the time one map, and I compose by a twist. So this is the new example now. So it's a very simple idea. And uh, of course, the hard part is I have to check. I get something which is uh, partially hyperbolic. That's the first thing. And then I have to tell you it's something new. And then uh, otherwise, it's not going to happen. OK, so uh, I compose with the Dane twist. I will tell you what the Dane twist is. So let me tell you what the Dane twist is. It's a bunch of translations. Here, I don't do anything. Here, I translate by one. And here, I'm translating by zero. And then slowly here, I have bigger and bigger and bigger translations till I'm translating by one. So what, uh, maybe you haven't seen a Dane twist in dimension three. So I'll draw another picture about Dane twist in dimension two. Here's what a Dane twist is. I have an annulus. I keep this fixed. And this is rotation by two pi. So it looks fixed in the neighborhood over here. And I just keep rotating by more and more angle until I reach the end. And I'm rotating by two pi. OK. So this, when you're in a surface, it's easy to check that. Often, it's easy to check. If I do a Dane twist here, I get something uh, non-trivial non in the mapping class, which means it's not isotopic to your old map. So here, if I want a new example, I have to check. I get something new, and then you have to check. and. There's a theorem that helps you. It says if the two pieces I'm gluing are hyperbolic, then the middle, all Dane twists are non-trivial. So I have to check. I get a new example. So that, and that's one thing. OK, what else I have to check? I told you I don't want to write anything else down. What else I have to check? I have to check that I have some transversality conditions. OK, so let me just give you a, a very simplistic proof. But I'm not giving proof. I'll give you some reasonable argument, which you may or may not believe. But OK. 
So what I look at, I look at the center stable here. And what am I doing? I'm composing by a Dane twist afterwards, right? So what happens? The, this is a fundamental domain. The center stable domain, the center stable moves off into the attract into the good guy. And then I compose the map. So it remains the same here. I'm not doing anything to the center stable. So that's unchanged here. And now uh, the center unstable, I will change. But uh, it, we argue we don't change so much, so it's still transverse. So you get something, you check some bundles are transverse, and then, uh, so, and then uh, you have an attractor repeller, and we prove it's partially hyperbolic. OK. Uh, five minutes. Uh, let me tell you why it's dynamically coherent. It's also easy. Okay, dynamical coherence, which means you can integrate stuff. Okay, so we prove this very easy fact. Let V be in the center, and I iterate it. Okay, so why is this easy? Because, uh, I have an attractor here, so every point, no, no matter where you start, is going to come into the attractor, right? And here I have some uniform estimates. And here you're not growing, you're not shrinking. And in the backward iterate, I come to the evil guy. And again, I have some uniform estimates. I, I only spend finite time outside some neighborhoods. So, and there I have uniform estimates, like a, a NASA flow there. So I get these easy estimates. OK, this is all you need to prove uh, dynamical coherence by Hirsch, Pugh, Schub. And they throw some fancy words around, like Lee up and up stable. And then, uh, in fact, that, that proves it's uniquely integrable. They're unique. Also, this condition is open. C1 open, you make a small perturbation, you get the same condition, because our tractor doesn't get destroyed, repeller doesn't get destroyed. TFN for all N. Yes, because a small perturbation will not kill the attractor repeller. So this C1 open, so what that means is this is stably, dynamically coherent. That's what that means. So the example, and uh, also it's not, it's a new example because it's not homotopic to any Anasa flow. You have a question? Yeah. Okay. So there, this is not the only new example. There are other new examples. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can have two sources and you can drill two holes and do stuff. You can have uh, five million holes and start gluing them together. There's not, there are other examples by other, other people that do this construction, and uh, it's still transitive afterwards. And then there's uh, uh, other constructions that say, why do one Dane twist start composing Dane twists? So there are all the other examples, but if you want to see one, you want to see Franks Williams, or you want to see Franks Robinson, then you see Franks Williams, then you see this, and then it's a straight line from there. It's a straight line from 1976, but today is 2016, so it took too long. But I'm happy to be part of it. And uh, this conference also, uh, let me stop here. Thank you.